first of all, when we talk Power BI, let's focus on Power BI desktop, there's three main engines uh, behind it for this product. The one that does the ETL, the one that does the data modeling, and the one that handles data visualization. So that's Power Query, the semantic model, and then the Power BI report itself. Behind those engines, there are different uh, engines with different product managers, so they handle similar stuff in a different way. So Power Query handle blanks as nulls, and, and you can treat them as unknown. Power BI with DAX treats them in both ways, both in, as in an absence of value or as in unknown. We're going to deep dive on those two a little bit. And the data visualization usually has the combination that wants to be focus of this talk today. So the Power Query approach, unknown. So missing data, when you connect to the source and uh, start doing the, your transformations, it's treated as unknown, and in Power Query, it's represented as no, with a little bit of italic. And like SQL, they treat as no as unknown. So if you do some operation with a no value, at either at doing basic math or concatenation, it won't be automatically converted to zero or empty string. It will be treated as unknown. Therefore, every basic operation that involves a no value returns a no value. We're going to see in the demo, in a demo a little bit uh, in the future. So how do I suggest uh, to, you for, to handle these nodes in Power Query? First, you should handle them in early steps of your transformations. Uh, Fabric uh, says do medallion architecture. You won't do this in your bronze layer, but in your silver layer on, you should replace those nodes with something meaningful. You can use some uh, uh, functions that they can handle no efficiently in, in the way you're, the output is the one that you actually expect. And you can use the coalesce operator in the M language is the double question mark, it, uh, some, something like the coalesce one. So demo time. Let's go to Power BI. I have a, a, a Power Query here. Let's enlarge it a little bit. And I have a number, just two rows with a null here, A and B. I'm, I might uh, do a transformation in, when I can, I want to divide B divided by A. And even A being null, the output of this operation is null. I can change, uh, instead of a division, I can put the minus or the, the plus. Nulls is the output, because something plus unknown is unknown. So in Power Query, you should treat null as unknown, and it will uh, win at whatever task. Unfortunately, you, when you're uh, doing your Power Query uh, transformations, you won't always see data with no. So unfortunately, you can see uh, unexpected results later, but this is the root cause of this problem. One possible uh, way to correct this is to use uh, proper functions that they handle no uh, in the way we should expect. So you can, instead of put uh, A plus B, you can put them as an argument of the, the function leaks.sum, and then uh, add them. And this function will handle no the way you are actually expecting. Another possibility is to uh, use the coalesce operation. Uh, for, I don't like this uh, approach, but it's a possibility. So pick the value of A. If A is no, return zero. Or plus, pick the value of B. If B is no, uh, take at zero, and you can put several nested uh, coalesce operators side by side. So instead of, in my calculation that is doing the transformation, I 
handle the, the nodes specifically, I can, in early stages of my uh, silver or gold layer uh, transformations, I can handle no uh, within the business logic. Here, I know it's a uh, numeric value, so I can replace values. I can replace no with zero. And automatically, when I fix the source, every calculation works, even the first one that uh, didn't uh, work with the basic uh, mathematics operation. Okay, I can have a string example, uh, supposed to be a string here. I have at this, this simple, oh, sorry, it's supposed to be the last one. I have the, the simple concatenation, and guess what? If there is a null, unknown, unknown concatenated with something equals unknown. So we might have some other approaches. We can use the function text.combine, again, like passing the parameter as uh, a list, and then this special function actually uh, handles the missing values uh, the way most people would expect. And we can, of course, use the coalesce approach I don't like that much for this scenario, but that's a, a, a possibility also. And guess what? You should, in early stages, correct it. So I can replace the no with something meaningful. It can be an empty, empty string here, and then it corrects the output uh, it, is not no here. Or you can put something more meaningful. So, oh, that's not available. An A or something else. Okay? And to finalize this part of the, the demo, we have the, uh, the coalesce uh, operation. I have the, this source here. But I have the order date, ship date, delivery date, return date. For the current status, I want to pick the closest uh, date. So if there is a return date, I pick the return date. If not, the delivery. If not, the ship date. If not, the order date. A possible solution is to actually, I think I hide the query settings here. <coughs> so we can use the coalesce. So return this one. If it is no, return the second one. If it is no, return the third and so on. You can use uh, uh, this syntax, uh, double question mark, to actually handle nodes in the, those kinds of situations. Okay, I think that's enough for the power query part, not now. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, the, the semantic model approach, uh, now we are talking about DAX here. The, Main way it treats absence, uh, the, the blank or the no, it's like an, an absence of value. It's not a no. A no means absence of values. I treat that absence of value with the more common approach, which is uh, what most people should expect. So missing data in the DAX world is not represented as no. It's represented as blank, and blank is treated like in Excel. It converts to zero, it converts to empty string, it converts to a date that 1899, December 30, not 31. If you put zero in Excel and convert to, to, to date, it, it won't have a date. If you put one in Excel and convert to date, it will return uh, January 1st and 1900. So it, I don't know why they picked that date, but Blank is treated as that date if you are dealing with date. <coughs> Sorry. And blank can also be treated as false. So zero, empty string, that strange date, and false. Okay? And the only way blank behaves like blank is when you use that special operator, double equal, that's called strictly equal, and it won't do that Convert a, uh, conversion on the fly. It won't convert blank into zero or to empty string. It will treat blank as blank when you use that double equal, which is the strictly equal operator. Okay? 
So another way of thinking about uh, blank, uh, the absence of value in the DAX world, is when you have an invalid relationship. So you usually have a dimension, you, you usually have a fact, and you do a one too many uh, relationship with some ID or, or some column like that. If there is, in this invalid relationship is also known as a referential integrity violation. So your dimension, who is supposed to have all the extra data for every fact that you own, is incomplete. So you have extra data in the facts that doesn't, uh, weren't reflected in your dimension. It only adds that blank row if you are in a regular relationship realm. Uh, the CCOBI guys call them strong and weak relationships. A couple years uh, later, Microsoft officially put this in the documentation and called regular and limited relationship. I really, really encourage you to read that part of the documentation, which is game changing for you for uh, actually understand the DAX language. So try to a regular and limited relationship, learn Microsoft and read that whole page multiple times. And once you get those uh, concepts, everything can becomes more clear. So the actual way the Power BI propagates a regular relationship, which is the most common, by the way, is like Excel modelers should do. What Excel modelers usually do? You have a dimension, you have a fact. Let's say those are the data for those uh, two tables. When you link that, you're the relationship uh, propagates through some unknown thing and then filters the fact table. No, it uses the relationship to expand that table. So in this case, I have more data in my fact than I have in my dimension. So the blank row, the invalid relationship or the, re the referential integrity will be viol violated. So in this case, what the engine actually does is some optimized version of what Excel people should do. If you look at all the things, have that big table with all the columns I, I have available. So whenever they call for ID four, five, and six, we actually don't have any data in the dim dimension. So every column that was supposed to have data will have blank. It's unknown. I don't know what, so I return blank. And after that, it, blank, this blank will be treated as the, the, the previous explanation, as a zero empty string, that strange date, or false. Okay, so it's really important to uh, understand this part here. So it's the engine to keep the relationship valid. It also adds an extra row to my dimension. And if I had a snowflake, to every other dimension in that snowflake chain, that all blank row that represents that, that invalid relationship. If you use the table functions, values, all, and summarize column, they all seize that extra row if your model is invalid, if your relationship is invalid. So they see them. Every other table function, they won't see them, so there's, uh, there was topic for, uh, of the advanced DAX from Marco Russo uh, training day here at this conference. So this blank row is automatically generated whenever you have a bad model. The dimensions are supposed to have every metadata or extra data for every fact that I have a relationship. If they don't have, the engine corrects us for us, creating that uh, blank row. So what are my suggestions to deal with it in the semantic model side? First of all, we should follow the uh, Roche's maxim. We should treat, manage data as upstream as possible and as downstream as necessary. So we are supposed to uh, handle this outside of the semantic model in Power Query or something more upstream. You should put a validation step in your ETL process that guarantees that all of your dimensions have a complete information about all of the facts that you're adding. 
So we don't add, we will find the problem in the future about their invalid relationship. We can, uh, as an alternative, but depends on every specific scenario, is to replace that missing dimensions with uh, not available or undefined until the next day that, that new data will arrive and I can actually see the, the details. As I already said, you have to respect, uh, respect the Roche's maxim. And after, th th there's one, one thing that most people, uh, especially in the visualization layer, they don't want to see blanks. They want to see a little dash or zero or some other value. If you're doing that on that measure that will be only used to fit that visual, okay. Otherwise, if you do that, some coalesce uh, DAX function that transforms uh, blanks into zero, for example, if you do that in a measure, and that measure is referenced by another measure that is uh, within a context transition of a large iterator, that's a bad, bad idea, because it will lead to poor performance. So don't use DAX to uh, force blank being into zero so the visual can actually show all the values. That, that, that's the message I, I, I give it to my heart. Demo time. So I already have that, that, uh, that little model that I, I just saw you, dimension and fact. You can see the dimension and then the fact here. I have this report place page here. Uh, with the dimensions, one, two, three. The fact, one, two, six. And what the engine actually does to propagate that relationship is to put some kind of expanded table. And this expanded table has all the information for one, two, one, two three, and all blank information for that missing uh, data. So and I, I really like this function uh, called 2CSV. They, they let us see a temporary virtual tables that we write in our DAX code. So whenever you want to see if the, that uh, table expression actually returns what we expect, you can put them to 2CSV and have a feel about it. So I can see, if I use the function values, I can see the one, two, three, and then that blank row because it doesn't have any value. So that function actually see the extra row that was added at my dimension. If I use the summarized columns, I can uh, also see here. And I, if I use all, I can see that extra layer as well. OK? Question? Sorry? Yeah, the, the slicer. Yeah, the, the slicer use uh, an automatic uh, uh, question. I repeat the question. If it's, it, 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 it is easier if you add an, a slicer. A slicer is a visual. A visual has an automatic DAX query that uh, sends to the engine, and that that DAX query. Let, let's see here. We'll probably use the blank here. Sorry? There's a lot of noise back there. If you take it from the fact table. If I take from the fact, no, no. That extra blank row is only on the dimension, not the fact. So I can put optimize, performance analyzer, start recording, refresh this slicer, and I can see the dark square that it runs underneath. It actually uses values and value sees the blank row. That's why we are, when we have an invalid relationship, we actually see it on the slicers. But where can we correct that? In the data model before it uh, reaches for your semantic model, okay? So with that, we are on time. Uh, thank you very much. Please give, give us feedback.